Hi Heather, Shelby, uh, we're about to get started for your Bell's Palsy. So let's have a look and see what's going on. So just been reading through your notes again and uh, yeah, well done and did a quick, just a checklist, you know, sort of a Google checklist of the main things that are linked in with Bell's Palsy. We'll see if any of those are linked, they may or may not be. Uh, but so just asking the body to tap into Heather's energy. Okay. Asking that Heather's higher self allow us in. And hold, hold together, hold apart, beautiful. Okay. Okay, so we'll just start with some survival stuff anyway, sort of just, actually, no, no, I'll ask. So where do we need to start? Oh, no. we need to go in through the inflammatory pathway so okay so let's just firstly in the clear minus any supplements minus any medications okay. and hold 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 okay so there's definitely stuff going on in your immune system that's creating inflammation that your body just doesn't know what to do with because it's um, four major immune pathways as well as energy mismatch. So there's stuff in your immune system, in your body, your immune system doesn't know how to cope with. So it doesn't have a program for it. So particularly uh, these little points, you know, there's a thing in body talk, whatever you focus on, uh, you direct your energy to. So if you're, just say your face from the Bell's palsy was feeling uh, nervy or irritated or hot or something, you could sort of energetically connect to that and then tap those points. So they're basically just either side of the collarbone and down on the side of the body. So by tapping those and thinking, consciously about an area of the body and doing a couple of deep breaths that helps the immune system to focus on an area and help to just keep boosting the immunity in those little pathways these are acupuncture points that are specific for the immune point for the immune system okay so Okay, I'm going to scan through and see where we need to start. You never know what it is. Okay, so just even on page one, just even just mentioning your thyroid stuff. Ah. And then also how you handle stress. So they're the two things we've got to focus on next. So oh, it does make me wonder if um, your thyroid has lowered your immune system so your immune system isn't uh, coping as well as it could. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to read out this how you handle stress. Um, I thought I could handle it fairly well for the most part, but I might be wrong. I'm always worried about others and I'm a helper. I think I just let things build up inside too long, but I've been better at trying to talk about my feelings. But then again, when I do, I always feel like I'm complaining. <laughs> wow, writing out this makes me realize uh, I might need to see a therapist. So <laughs> we're all there with you, babe. Yeah, so, uh, so stress and thyroid. So if you've always been the helper, sometimes the nervous system goes, okay, let's give you a helping hand and it'll shut down your energy so you can't do everything you've been doing. So let's just check over all the thyroid energy. So it's the triple warmer. So hold back. Hold back. Okay. 
So this is, once again, reminder, it's without your supplements or your medications. And I'm gonna check the adrenals through the flexahalicus longus. Hold, okay. And hold. Yeah, so that says yes, running on adrenaline and that's making the thyroid struggle. And the other organ associated with that is the immune system. So, right, so that is the triple triple warmer, triple heater, meridian, thyroid, adrenal, and immune system. So that little combo, rather than just boosting them individually, I'll see whether there's some survival patterns linked. Hold, uh-huh, so that's survival switching. Hold, that's deep survival. And hold, and that's hidden deep survival. So we've got the triple whammy going on. So survival switching is about a one-off incident that's happened that's triggered your immune system or your, your nervous system to go, okay, life's gonna be stressful forever. Deep survival switching is about constant and chronic stress. And you know, for example, that could be the relationship with your father that was just ongoing your entire life. Uh, and then even though you didn't have anything to do with him for a lot of years before he passed, you know, that, that stress is there. We don't stop thinking about people just because they're not in our life a lot of the time. And then the deep hidden survival is that your nervous system has gone, this is too much for me, let's just hide the stress so that you can just deal with life. But of course, it's still just tapping away in the background. And it's interesting because this nervous system, the periventricular survival system, it's about your nerve, your uh, sensory nervous system being overloaded and here's your body giving you Bell's palsy where you can't avoid seeing that you know when when it when it's playing up so it's interesting your body's given something you can't avoid dealing with okay so first little area and once again this is probably linked in with all the worry the fact that you're a warrior and you want to sort things out for people all the time the anterior cingulate gyrus picks on you yourself when you're under stress and you're not coping with it as well as you should. Hold out. Yeah, the anterior cingulate gyrus, it's also where we set up a lot of our obsessions and compulsions. Once again, we often don't know we've got them until we start paying attention to things. But that's escape submission freeze, it's wanting to run away. So your brain would rather run away than have all this worry and anxiety, but then you'd probably feel guilty that you weren't worrying. It tends to be part of our makeup sometimes. Okay, yeah. So it's, excuse me, it seems like you're going to, oh, I might be wrong. But the uh, ones linked in with the family stress or the family genetics or the how family deals with stress, these are a couple of the nuclei showing up. So orbitofrontal cortex, that's about conflict. And hold. And once again, it's escape submission freeze. So it's wanting to run away. Yeah, right. So we, yeah, so even for example, the stuff with your dad, uh, you know, not seeing him the last years of his life, there's um, in the metal element, so uh, lung and large intestine, it's about indifference, you know, so we try to raise a boundary so we just don't care anymore but then uh, there can still be that um, regret that we didn't, once again, try to um, work things. Some things just aren't meant to be sorted. Hmm. Oh, I was about to say, I wish I was a bit psychic so I could tap into him for you, but yeah, not, not within my range of skills. And really, I don't want that skill, so that's a lie, I don't want it. <laughs> I thought of for a heartbeat then, I thought, no, 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 don't want that. <laughs> I've seen what it does. Did um did you know what happened to Sanu when she was in town recently? Yeah. She um because you know, for her an hour drive from the Gold Coast to Brisbane is absolutely massive. Mm. And coming back into Wynnum just released all this old 
energy for her that she was surprised about. So she spent the whole time meditating and healing and getting over negative energy and mm. poor darling. Yeah. So yes, I'm glad I'm not that sensitive. <laughs> it's very handy. Yeah, but that one, the orbitofrontal cortex, it's about conflict. And we know it's particularly active when stuff just won't leave your brain, when you're thinking about something and and it is just there, you know, hour in, hour out. And especially, and that can happen when we're worried about something. But just say that you actually do then make a decision to change something and you're still thinking about it, you know. So you've gone, okay, I've made this decision, I'm going to move on with my life. And then you're still thinking about it three days, three weeks later, and you go, why am I still thinking about it? I made that decision. It's because your brain doesn't think you've made the decision or it thinks you made the decision under duress because survival is all about duress. It's about, uh, it's about the brain believing you're about to get eaten by a tiger, so therefore you quickly better make a decision now. None of that energy going on at the planet at the moment. <laughs> Crazy decisions being made all over the place. Mm. Okay, reticular activating system. Okay, so, uh, so the adrenals are releasing adrenaline all the time, but they're also releasing noradrenaline. So noradrenaline is at that expectation of long-term stress. Yeah creating vigilance in the nervous system. So anything that makes your nervous system overwork is going to make it harder for your body to heal the Bell's palsy. So because from a naturopathic standpoint, we want about four grams a day or 4,000 micrograms a day of B12, uh, which is equivalent in Australia. I don't know what it's like overseas, but in Australia, our B12 injections tend to be about 2,000 milligrams. Obviously, they're intramuscular, but what I like about taking oral B12, get it in a good form, you know, you can get the um, MTHFR B12 or the uh, basically the activated B12, so then your body doesn't have to break it down, it doesn't have to convert it. It's ready to go for the nervous system. Okay, there we go. Um, there's another RAS circuit because I can't let me have a look so I can't remember if you've had any operations oh yeah you have so with operations sometimes the anesthetics combine to the B12 receptors and that can stop you from oh so maybe not Sorry, smiling, smiling at the roller derby team. <laughs> um, no, so I don't know. So anaesthetics, if you've had anaesthetics, and it can even be uh, dental work, by the way, anaesthetics for that. So anaesthetics can bind to the B12 receptors and make it harder for you to both get B12 out of your diet as well as uh, release the enzyme. The activating factor that you need in order to absorb B12 and hopefully you've got your appendix because the area in the body we absorb most of our B12 is two inches either side of the appendix. Anyway, so there's another RAS circuit again. Okay, so this time it's noradrenaline again, but this time it's with the B12, uh, sorry, it's with the kidney one points, which are to do with focusing and directing attention. So once again, with something like worry, if you're releasing noradrenaline, the nervous system's assuming long-term stress, 
uh, and then the kidney one point is about then focusing your attention on something. So when you've got something coming up that you're worried about, your body then starts to focus on it and it sort of just can't get it out of your mind. Doesn't help, of course. As we know, 99% of the things we worry about never, never happen. And because our nervous system primes us for stress, wanting to keep us safe, wanting to keep us in a, it's almost like your nervous system is deliberately keeping you on edge so that you don't miss the next thing to stress out about. Okay, that orbitofrontal cortex that showed up before, there's a second circuit with it. So I'll just grab my other book. This is the one about conflict. So the orbitofrontal cortex is like a six second loop in the brain. And basically it's, it's like a gyrus. It sits just in underneath the logical and creative brain. And what it's doing is waiting for logic and creativity to come into into the decision-making process. So when we are stressed and when we are um, in survival, a lot of our blood supply is in the rear of the brain. It's actually not in the front of the brain. So therefore the blood supply isn't in that logical creative hemispheres, which is, I don't know if you do any meditation or yoga or anything like that, but you know, popping your uh, fingers on your forehead halfway between your eyebrows and your hairline uh, sort of in here and just holding them really really gently while you're trying to problem solve something after sometimes a few seconds sometimes a minute you'll feel the blood supply coming to the frontal cortex and uh, that can that can really help your brain to find solutions a bit more easily because the frontal cortex is where we problem solve consciously when we're problem solving in survival, it's going to be the worst case scenario for everything. It'll be all about safety, all about fear, all about, um, you know, not allowing you to make the wrong decision, which of course means that sometimes we just don't move forward in life. Uh, interior cingulate gyrus, orbitofrontal cortex. There it is. Oh, okay. So, So the other two little pathways with the orbitofrontal cortex, we'll see. Yeah, so, so. Uh, stomach eight. And hold, okay. So this little part of the orbitofrontal, anterior cingulate gyrus, orbitofrontal cortex. <laughs> orbitofrontal cortex is to do with calm and restlessness. So it's when we've just got that frenetic nervous energy. Once again, that depletes your body of B vitamins, that depletes your body of the nutrients we need in order to help our nervous system to heal. So this will be calming it down. Uh, the point I'm on is fear, threat, danger. So it's at where the rib cage meets. That sort of little, it can be a bit tender in there. It's, uh, you know, there's like a little bit of cartilage in it cartilage tissue in there called the xiphoid process and and it sits at the bottom of the lungs or you know where the lungs meet in here but quite often when we are running on that nervous system energy a lot of the time even if you're not noticing it you might just feel like you've got um, adrenaline going a lot of the time well it's the same sort of thing Okay, and now we're going back to another reticular activating system circuit after that. Yeah, so it does feel like the nervous system, so just thinking about the Bell's palsy, it just feels like the nervous system needs um, support. So 
because actually I haven't checked it yet, have I? The celestial circuit? Anyway, I'll check it in a sec. But because you've got survival, deep survival and hidden deep survival running, it's like your body is just constantly on the lookout for the next thing to go wrong. So no wonder you feel like you're always worrying. Thank goodness for your puppy dog, eh? Okay, now we're going to go into the sympathetic nervous system. So when it's running too much, it switches off our rest and digest system. And anything that makes our nervous system run harder in the background is going to be depleting your nerves. I don't know whether you need to set up like a meditation spot or, you know, so, you know, get some sort of practice going in your day that's really about you and regenerating you and just allowing yourself just to be. Funny, I had someone in the clinic a few days ago and she said to me, um, well, as a human being, I just want to be a being being instead of a doing being. And, you know, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's an interesting thing to say, whatever. And then honestly, halfway through her session, one of my uh, books, and I can't remember, it was probably a flower essence book, and it showed up and it said, um, some people are doing beings instead of being beings. And I just looked at it and I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's the most bizarre thing. But okay, there's the message. Okay. Okay, and at this point it does feel like the celestial circuit has just sort of fallen apart a little bit. It's off chasing fairies. So we need to reconnect, yeah, we need to reconnect your central meridian to your governing meridian. This is going to be related to something a little extra in your notes, so I'll just sort of check. So the centre of gravity is off to the right, which is the masculine, it's the doing, it's the, uh, it's the high energy part of our... part of our systems. Yeah, right. And that probably is linked in with, you know, trying with your dad and just not getting any reciprocal uh, energy, you know, so when you're trying, trying, trying all the time, that's exhausted. That's exhausting as well. Yeah, your immediate family, it's not linked in with that. It seems more with the, you know, the unresolved dad stuff. Oh, 
okay. It's also about the ex. So there's, yeah, so it is, it's old masculine energy that's still holding you back. So it's about your dad, it's about your ex. It, you know, so it's more that sort of energy that's sort of um, taking your center of gravity and pulling it. It's wanting to go, so it's showing up on the right and in, in the past. So there's something back there that's messing with your energy healing in the here and now. So, you know, because the center of gravity is the Duntian, which is uh, there and it's just not there. So it's, it's downright. So we need to bring it back in, need to bring it home. And like you said, that was a huge, a huge 2019. So, uh, but that whole, whole thing about 2019 is showing up as well, you know, as being linked in. Mm, not so much the loss of a job. Not so much the injury. No, it just seems to be the masculine stuff. Okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah, so letting go of the struggles of the past and starting afresh. That's sort of what it feels like, you know, the, the two things that are major things in your life that ha they're just holding, they, they are, they're holding you at ransom, you know, energetically. So in releasing any and all negative, negative energy about males in your life, any and releasing any and all negativity about past relationships and removing any and all negative energy from people who aren't seeing your, your best for you moving forward. So the flower essence showing up is Silver Princess, uh, which is more about life direction. I know it sounds like, you know, I'm not trying to say, come on, princess. But, you know, sort of like it's life direction. It's about, yep, yeah, taking this time for you, making sure you're going in the direction that you want to be going. And then, I like, even with um, stuff like the weird politics in your family, how, you know, you just don't quite think they're saying, that's all good. You know, this is a time on the planet of healing. It's a time on the planet for you for healing. And everyone just needs to be in a place of love and, love and forgiveness at the moment so that we can get through this year and really move forward next year in a really positive place. Six drops. Six drops is pretty big. So that's pretty much most of your life. So it's a, it's a big amount of... Um, recent stress or it's because uh, seven drops is your whole life so I imagine you must have realized early on that you and your dad just weren't gonna be close and with all that struggle you know sort of the court and everything when you were kids okay so we still need to do this thank goodness for your grandparents eh
be healthy and well. I am happy, healthy, and well. Okay, so the celestial circuit is recentered. So your little Duntian is back in place, but something about that has blown the base chakra, which is interesting because if your whole center of gravity is off to the side or off to the side, then it means that all your chakras can be off to the side. Your meridian flows with different organs can be off to the side. So it's like we need to reboot your base chakra now as well. So that's around feeling safe and grounded and, uh, it's about safety it's it's all about safety and like we say because of you know your childhood you know even though you had a fabulous childhood with grandparents and that's great you know but just all that friction that was going on as a childhood as a child your nervous